Welcome to the Microsoft Security Insights Show. The show streams live at 5 every Wednesday evening on YouTube and Twitch and streamed directly into your ear the following Monday. Hosted by Edward Walton, Andrea Fisher, Rod Trent, and Brody Castle, the Microsoft Security Insights Show provides information, news, and tips on Microsoft security solutions. Recorded live. <laughs> February 22nd, 3.05 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Good afternoon, good evening, Andrea, Rod, Trent, and to our viewers, listeners around the world, how are you two today? Hello, Jody. <laughs> hello, Rod. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Um, obviously, folks will recognize right away because we're going to jump into the guest really quick this week that Edward's not here. Um, unfortunately, something's going Edward's on. Not Ed. here? Yeah, Edward's not here tonight. Oh, so we'll realize. talk to him later. I it's something about aliens and soup or something like that. I'm not sure what it is, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll find out more about that later. Hey, um, I do want to say this has kind of been a weird week. So, you know, our show last week, I think I mentioned I was sick. That sickness lasted until like today. Right. I'm still I'm just kind of starting to feel good. So whatever that thing was, it's going around and it's it's terrible. My wife is completely, completely out. She's um, I know she listens to this show every once in a while. Um, she's kind of a baby when it comes to pain. She has some health issues as well, but she's really absolutely down. My youngest daughter is down, too. So um, just kind of keep that. us in your thoughts as we kind of work through all of these sicknesses. But I do want to, before we jump over to Andrea, see what she's been doing this week, other than trying to help me with uh, an issue, is um, next month is Women in Cybersecurity Month. I don't know how many people know that March is Women in Cybersecurity Month, but now you do. Yeah. Um, and I am so excited about the people that we have coming on next month. I just want to go through this. Um, so we have our guest tonight, which we'll introduce here shortly. Um, and there's a very good reason why I mentioned that in relation to our first guest next month. On March 1st, we actually have Maria Thompson, who is the head of our security partners organization here at Microsoft. She's going to be on the 1st. Um, on the 8th, we have Vasu Jakal, who's the CVP for you know, security at Microsoft. She's on the marketing side. Um, on the 14th, which is actually a Tuesday, we usually do this on Wednesday, <clears throat> but our guest is so super special. She gets to choose her day. Um, that's Ann Johnson on the 14th. She'll be on, we'll be on a little bit early, but also on Tuesday. So people can kind of get ready for that. Back on the 22nd, um, we have my good buddy, Laura Goldstein. Her and I have done a bunch of really cool Defender for Cloud things together before she's going to be on also with future who's been on here before as well and then our very last episode of march celebrating women in cybersecurity uh is i'm actually super excited about this one as well yeah uh, this comes from andrea um this is elizabeth <laughs> stevens who is the director of dc cyber and risk intelligence which to me sounds very very serious there should be some really cool discussions coming along with that so that's what's that's what's coming up for march yeah, Elizabeth is so cool too. She's Naval Academy grad, former Marine pilot, all kinds of interesting stories she's got to share. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, man, believe. we got such a great that's like lineup. A, that, is, yeah. that is unreal. Well, what an important month. I mean, like we need everybody in cybersecurity, right? I mean, I don't know what I'd do without all the amazing women in my life. And so if we can get more women in cybersecurity to help us go push forward. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's super important. We need we need everyone. These guests are gonna help demonstrate that there are already great women in cybersecurity and we we just we just wish that we yeah. could exp expand as much as we can you know like everybody from all walks of life needs to get involved well there's a huge industry. huge gap in cybersecurity and we talk about that at microsoft a lot we develop these skilling services and things like this to help you know vets and women and just all of the inclusion in security we have a lot of gaps um i think notoriously and historically um, the IT groups have always just been kind of considered, you know, for a long time, male stuff. But a yeah, sausage party. I, I don't think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I don't think that's the way it is, particularly cybersecurity. We have so many gaps and there's so many women who have been in IT for so long. They just they have, you know, this intelligence to be able to just kind of do things right away. So I think this is huge. I think the more we can support this, the better. Agreed. Oh. Yeah. 
we we ladies i will speak on behalf of all of us we appreciate the uh the passion behind this so thank you guys good no problem well, you- oh and, and we will have andrea on next month just uh, oh yeah andrea's gonna be here too i guess yeah speaking of amazing yeah, women security right. yeah <laughs> Thanks, Rod. Thanks for breaking that down. What an excellent lineup. I think I hope we we know everyone's going to really enjoy our guest lineup for March. We're extremely excited about it. And yeah, Ann Johnson, that special time and day during business hours, uh, we'll be broadcasting you live on Tuesday. So hope you stay, hope you tune in. Yeah. Andrea, uh, segue. I was going to say, ahead. speaking of that, people who are, who listen to or watch this podcast uh, live feel free to put in the chat or let us know do you, what do you feel about us doing this earlier during work hours? This is work stuff. Should we be doing it during work hours? Yes or no? Let us know. Yeah. Uh, we love to hear your comments. Yeah, totally. It doesn't matter to me. I'm in mountain standard time. So this is during work hours for me, but all these true. Eastern people uh, are hangering for dinner by the time the podcast is ending. And I can appreciate that. So we're open to all feedback. If you want to see us come on a little earlier. Uh, sorry, folks, our friends in the UK, Oh, is it a podcast or a show, Noodle? Uh, you know, it's kind of both. It's a podcast and a show. Um, it's also a, a, a venting room. It's also an education sector. I mean, gardening. so many so many things that we have going on here. It's a KQL code factory. I mean, Rod Trent refactors KQL code like you've never believed. So <laughs> many things going on here at Microsoft Security Insights. But anyway, we'd love your feedback in terms of uh, what we can do better if we could produce the show a little earlier, the podcast a little earlier. We'd love to hear that. So, by the way, I hope Andrew. I hope Noodle appreciated the call out on our Substack post today about all the ways that you can catch the Microsoft Security Insights show weekly. Uh, there's a big call out, and thank you to Noodle. Folks, can I'll put a link in the in the chat here so everybody can get to it. There's a call out. A um, bunch of other cool stuff out there that folks can check out. But is it a show or a podcast? It's actually both. So yeah, that <laughs> kind of explains it as well. Well, let's. Let's pull on our guest, if you guys don't mind, because I know we were going to want to spend a lot of time with him. Welcome, Jake. Everyone, this is Jake Maurer. Jake is an old pal of mine. We met, I don't know, nine, ten years ago. Uh, Microsoft sent about 20 of us over to Israel for the debut of what was then Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection, now Microsoft Defender for Endpoints. And the 20 of us, I think, became lifelong friends, and I've been lucky enough to keep Jake in my life since then. Uh, Jake, do you want to tell us about, that was, we were both uh, global black belts then, but have both moved on to different positions. What are you up to these days, Jake? Yeah, so thank you very much. Um, really, really happy to be on the show, and um, I definitely treasure your friendship, Andrea. It's been it's been fantastic. Um, so, There's yeah, no thanks for having me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was trying to win those points, but, uh, but yeah. So, so yeah. So Jake Maurer, um, you know, I, I've done a lot of different it things. Um, I, I don't know when it happened, but like I'm the old man in it now. Like I remember making fun of like older people in it and now I'm the old guy. It's bizarre, but, um, I still but yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I, but I'm a man child. I'm a self proclaimed man child, uh, given all the, if you're watching the video, you can watch it. This is my geek lab here, but, um, but yeah, I've been in it for, uh, for about 25 years. Um, I spent 10 years, uh, outside of Microsoft, just, uh, doing everything from help desk, uh, working nights on a help desk when I was 20 years old. And, you know, my first pay p- paycheck, I blew it all on like, you know, video games, like a huge yes. stack of video games. <laughs> yes. and, uh, and pizza. You know, and, yeah, pizza, a lot of right. pizza. Yeah, maybe some beer, but you know, yeah, maybe a little. I, bit. I don't remember any bit. of that. But, yeah. yeah, but uh, <laughs> but yeah. So, um, but yeah, did a lot of things there. Did some IT management. Did some server stuff. Um, mainly though, Windows. So, you know, pretty much all Microsoft stack stuff. Um, and then I got the opportunity um, to to come to Microsoft to be a uh, what was called a technical account manager. Um, nice. And I didn't really know what that meant, but it had the word technical in it. I was like, okay, I'm kind of a nerd. It turned out like I wasn't supposed to be technical, but I, I just did technical <laughs> stuff anyway. And so um, that led me into premier field engineering. Um, and I did some set technical sales, security sales stuff for a while. Um, and then I jumped to like the global black belt role with, with Andrea. Um, and now I, you know, I, I, yeah, I did, uh, I did some um, defender for endpoint uh, deployment assistance for very large customers. 
Um, and then recently, uh, well, I, I say it, about a year ago, I joined um, this new team uh, inside of our um, Microsoft Cloud Solution Provider uh, network. It's a new team called uh, Partner Center Security. And so what we were, what we, basically what keeps us up at night is, you know, partners, especially uh, Microsoft partners and all partners are, are uh, pretty well targeted by threat actors because the bang for the buck they get for infiltrating a partner uh, is multifold, right? right? If I can get to the right. partner, I can get to their customers. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's definitely a, a very tough place uh, to be. It's, it's very lucrative from a business perspective, but there's definitely a lot of responsibility and, um, and security things that need to be taken care of there. So, so that's, that's what I'm doing. I, that's what keeps me up at night is, is partner security. Well, that's, that's super interesting. So that's, that's totally different than I even imagined when Andrea mentioned that you come on, we'll have some other things to talk about here shortly, but, um, so you are helping secure our actual partners versus enabling our partners to deliver our security. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's where a lot of the confusion comes in. It's like, Hey, Jake, are, are you, you know, what partners are you training on Defender for Endpoint? I'm like, well, I don't really do that much anymore. And now I, I try to convince them to buy it for themselves and implement it for themselves so that they have, you know, additional insights into the endpoints that they're using to manage customers and all those things. So, so yeah, so that's, um, it's, it's a little different than the, the that other rule. Yeah. So that's interesting. So you still get to keep your hands dirty and technical, which is, you know, kind of what you were pigeonholed into in the first place. Right. So what, what, yeah. what tools, what tools are you using? If you could say to, to secure our partners, it's the same stuff that we're, you know, our customers are using or, Different things. Yeah, you know, it's um, it's it's a bit unique in this position because I went from you know being on our customer acceleration team where we deployed only Defender for Endpoint. Well, really, M three sixty five Defender. We 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 deployed Defender for Endpoint, but then we also talked it from a broader scale of M three sixty five Defender on how to operationalize that, integrate that into your sim, and you know how to read alerts and all those things. Um, to this role where a partner could be using, you know, Microsoft products, it could be using third party products. So we talk, we tend to talk in, you know, concepts, right? Um, for example, like, you know, privilege access workstations, let's just use that as an example, right? Um, that could be a, a Linux box if you want it to be, it could be a Windows box. Um, just as long as it's not the same box that you're using to, you know, watch Twitch streams or, you know, read email on or... Uh, play World of Warcraft or or whatever, right? As long as it's not that machine, um, then you know uh, uh, that that that's a good thing. So so I, right, I talk right. to a lot of partners with those types of things, but it's very we're very down to the basics when it comes to these things. Like, hey, you know, all your all your accounts should have some kind of multi-factor authentication. You know, preferably something that is fish resistant, right? Um, the machines that you manage with your your customers on, because remember these partners have standing access in most cases into customer environments. So those machines that you use to try to to, to administer your customers should be uh, secure, uh, should be monitored, uh, should be protected, um, and so yeah, all those things. And then also like, hey, if you're getting security alerts from an identity perspective, endpoint perspective, etc. Uh, those should be monitored, responded. You should have a playbook for that. If you don't, then you know consider a, an outside MSSP or something like that. So, mm -hmm. um, so a lot of that's are the things that we talk about uh, in in our space. May I have a, ask a follow up? That's that's the exact thing I was going to ask next. Was do partners who provide maybe MSSP services to customers? How often are they leveraging an MSSP versus doing their own? security in-house what do you see yeah so um i i don't uh, you know to be honest i don't sell i don't work with a lot of mssps i work with the partners that i primarily work with are um partners that are helping small to mid-sized businesses so you know anywhere from five people to 500 people um do their you know do their cloud basically do their cloud uh do type the cloud. things do, yeah, do the cloud yeah. thing you know yeah, yeah. um and so, you know, I don't work with, two, I don't work with, um, I'm trying to think if I've, I've come across an MSSP quite yet. Uh, I don't think I have. Um, oh, okay. It's mainly, okay. yeah, yeah. It's mainly partners that are reselling our cloud solutions at Microsoft. And then they're also managing those cloud solutions for these, these customers. Um, but the, the big thing with that is, a, you know, 
strategic targets, especially for adversaries like um, Novellium, for example, um, uh, they can be considered a small business, right? And so, you know, uh, somebody that's in the political landscape, maybe a think tank or something like that, um, tends to be a, a target-rich environment for some of these threat actors. So uh, the not only is it important to secure those customers, it's also support, uh, important to secure those partners who have access into those customers too. So, you know, Jake, you started this role, you said a little bit of a, a year ago, and they that's because we didn't have a role like this until a little right. over a year ago. Was there anything specific that sort of, or anything you can tell us that spurred on the need for this particular uh, kind of role to be created? Yeah, if you look at, um, you know, if you look at the, um, the, the events kind of in, in the 2021, you know, second half of 2021, um, you, you'll see that Nobelium really ticked up uh, their, uh, that's a, that's a uh, advanced persistent threat, uh, uh, threat actor that we track as part of, um, of our mystic team, right? Um, they, they had a, they, they were definitely going after our partner space to try to get into strategic customers for espionage, you know, you kind of name it there. And so I think it came pretty, pretty clear to, to our leadership and, and Microsoft as a whole that we need to be spending more time with our partners, educating them around, you know, how maybe we do things in Microsoft from a security perspective, but also like what we've learned from our customers and also partners to learn from each other too. Um, that's really important. That's one of the th you know, first things I learned in this role, you know, being pretty new to the partner space myself, uh, was that I need to partner and, and really um, go arm in arm with partners into this battle because we only win together, right? It's easy for me to go out and say, well, why didn't you do that? You know, and be the Monday morning quarterback, but that really doesn't help anything, right? It's really like, Hey, this is what I learned. You know, what do you think about this? Oh, it's this, but it's really that kind of that mindset of, you know, um, a lot of minds together think alike, but, um, but yeah, I would say the Nobelium campaign is really what was the wake up call for us. No doubt. No Speaking doubt. of Monday, morning quarterbacking um that reminds me term. of the uh the um that dod server that had no password on it and all their emails this week that yeah yeah oh i missed that oh you need to look that up so <laughs> a couple of days ago there was this story that there was a misconfiguration of, of an email server that sat in azure to find out there was no password <laughs> That is and really like, isn't it by default? It's, it has a password. Like by default, it's secure by default, and someone, someone has to open up. So it's definitely a misconfiguration. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I wiped out that. There's literally only one rule to using passwords. That's have a password. <laughs> and don't make a password. Yeah, please. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah and that's. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, finish your thought. Finish your thought. Jake. Oh, no, I was just going to say, and that's, that's the bad thing is like, you could do all the right things, but yeah. then all it takes is like one mistake, right. Of, and we're all human. So we make it right. Um, it, it just takes that one mistake to, to uh, ruin somebody's day pretty bad. And also, you know, um, give the, the bad peeps uh, a uh, target rich environment. Um, well, I'm super happy like, you're there though, because it's, it, you can talk about these mistakes a lot of times these mistakes come from not understanding the product or the feature or, you know, something like that. So a lot of customers, whether they're partners or just kind of general commercial, they need someone to come alongside. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you think of it, like I try to put myself in the, uh, in the, in the mindset of a, like a dentist office or something like that. And I don't know why I picked the dentist because I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> dentist diverse. I, I do go, but like, it's like one of those That's things good. where I'm like, Oh man, I got to go to the dentist. And it's like two weeks from now. And then it just kind of <laughs> continues for two weeks. But, um, but yeah, if you think of the dentist office, you know, they're not there to think about getting ransomed and their, you know, x-ray machines that are all computerized now getting ransomed and everything else. And in fact, the, de the dentist that I went to when he found out that I was in cybersecurity, uh, he actually told me, yeah, we actually had a ransomware event about a month ago, you know? And so it's a very real thing, but they, you know, they should be trying to keep me out of pain rather than, <laughs> you know, worrying uh, about any kind of cybersecurity type thing. So, so yeah, it's our partner network that really helps us scale and, and really bring those best practices of security to those customers. Um, I think the the trick is, is that, 
you know, there's, there's, it's easier said than done. You know, a lot of partners don't have maybe that skill set, And so, and our solutions sometimes can be very easy to stand up, uh, but can also be exploited for that ease, right. Uh, or through that ease of use. So, you know, being able to kind of make things secure by default, I think is super critical, especially when it comes to that. Um, and then also, um, you know, us also doing, you know, lack of a better word, audits, you know, are our, are our partners, you know, doing the things that they need to do to keep our, our, our customers secure? Because in the end of the day, you know, if you're using Azure and your Azure subscription gets hacked and, you know, the threat actor runs up a big bill, are you going to probably buy Azure again? Probably not. You're going to go to a third party cloud, right? So, so it's in our best interest um, to, to do that for our customers and also our, our uh, financials. So ha has have we seen something like that, Jake? Yeah, you know, I think the big thing that um, we're we're combating in the partner space right now is um, is Azure subscriptions being taken over by threat actors to do whatever, right? Uh, that whatever can range anywhere from um, cryptocurrency mining uh, right. to DDoS to brute forcing to hosting their command and control. I mean, you kind of name it; it's it's Azure, so it's it's a Lego set for these threat actors, right? <laughs> um, so. So yeah, so that that's been a that's been a problem. Like um, you know, you'll be a customer. Like let's take that dentist office for example. The dentist you know wants to get M three sixty five. You know they email. They want to get a vanity domain and and kind of go that route. And then maybe they they just bought an X ray app that runs in Azure. So they're required to have an Azure subscription. So all they do is X ray in that Azure subscription. Well, all it takes is, you know, one global admin in that Azure subscription or one owner even. It doesn't even have to be a global admin. It could be an owner of that subscription to have a pretty weak password with no MFA. And that's a bad day. Um, you can go from $100 a use uh, in, a, in a month to $10,000 a day. Um, these threat actors are very good at scaling up their uh, infrastructure and really ringing up um, totals. And that, you know, that's that's pretty that's pretty upsetting to me personally, because, you know, my job is to help, you know, partners help customers not get into that. Um, so we're, we're trying to find creative engineering ways uh, to come up with um, um, roadmaps and blueprints and features inside partner center, our portal to defend against that kind of thing and advise partners to say, Hey, FYI, there's a user that has access to this part customer that doesn't have MFA on it. Um, so those are where our engineering, um, uh, engineering efforts are being spent today. So yeah, crypto mining is, um, cryptocurrency mining, uh, on subscriptions is a, is a big issue, not just in Azure, but in all cloud platforms. Yeah. That, that you talking about that made me have to go look at mine. <laughs> so. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, Cause well, I gave, okay. So most everybody on this call here, except for Jake has access to my demo environment for, uh, for certain things. Bro, do you still have access? I see you. I did. I, I think yeah, I added a, a workbook <laughs> recently. I hope I didn't rack up your bill too hard on that one. Jing yeah. has access because he had, you know. Um, so I, I'm, yeah, that, that kind of scares me now. I'm going to have to put some alerts <laughs> in place. got to go double check. Oh, is it Jing in Houston? Uh, yeah. 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 I know Jing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's trouble. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jing specifically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's a, oh. he's a good dude. Yeah. He's oh, a good dude. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Can you can you set a, a billing threat? Like so I, okay, let's just security control is important, right? Uh, proper identity hygiene important, yada yada yada. Um, but let's say let's say that dentist office who, who runs uh, X ray in the cloud, which that was hilarious, by the way. Um, yeah. Let's just. I, don't know uh, if that's true. Yeah. I I would be <laughs> the latency. Th anyway, anyway, getting past that, yeah. let's, let's stick with the example. Um, <laughs> Um, so let's say it's a predictable consumption with dentist <laughs> office and and an X-ray app in the cloud. Can can you as a as another control or measure have an initial threshold set so that the bill doesn't like enormously go too high if there's something that comes up? Yeah, Andrea's nodding her head. Yeah, okay. So that is, yeah. that, is that one of the capabilities that you would implement potentially. Yeah. In, in some of the Azure offers, um, that is possible. In the partner space, however, that um, that capability is not there. But there are other capabilities that do exist. So, for example, you can set up. Um, there's a. Uh, there's a. I don't remember the exact feature name, but there's a usage anomaly detection that you can you can uh, configure in the subscription, and it basically takes a sample of your last 30 days, if I remember how it works correctly. And it may have changed. It's been about a month since I looked at it. You know, 
Yeah. But, but uh, it looks at like wow. the last 30 days of your Azure usage. And if it starts to skew past that, it'll send you like through Azure Monitor, it'll, it'll send you an alert saying, hey, you know, something's going on there. Um, the trick there, though, is that if the threat actor gets access into your Azure subscription, guess right. what they can turn off, right? Right, exactly. So, yeah. uh, so for partners specifically, you know, the one thing that we definitely tell or, or tell advise our partners to do is to um, there's there's a feature inside Partner Center called um, uh, spending uh, limits or, or budget limits, um, and so you can basically set and say, hey, this should not go over a hundred dollars a month. And once it gets to eighty percent, it'll start pinging the the partner and let them know, like, hey, you know, the the bill's getting is at eighty percent of this, and it's only like you have twenty days left in the billing cycle. Something's going on. So as part of our, you know, um, CSP security best practices, um, one of the things that we advise our our uh, our partners to do is to set up that that spending notification inside Partner Center so they can get those notifications, get with the customer, ask them, hey, is this expected? If not you know, start to do your, your incident, um, your incident response plan from there. Smart, smart. That's key. Andrea. I was going to say, so Jake, before you started doing the partner stuff, you were out doing deployments out in the world. Is there anything weird or cool you could tell us about <laughs> somewhere you were deploying something? Yeah, no doubt. Both weird and oh. cool, please. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, let's see. I'm trying to think, you know, um, <laughs> I, I don't know, like, whenever I think of weird or cool, like, um, I, I don't think of, like, maybe my days in um, customer acceleration with Defender for Endpoint, but um, it, it does it does remind me of a time where, and it happened to be crypto mining, um, where my lab at Microsoft got hacked, which oh, uh, is pretty embarrassing, you know, like, I, I think this was, um, gosh, this must have been, uh, you know, six or seven or, no, it was like seven or eight years ago. Um, yeah, it, it turned out like I didn't patch one server and it was on the, if y'all remember, like the MTC had this like exterior network, it wasn't on the Microsoft network, but it was like, it had like a public internet connection. Um, yeah. so yeah, somebody like hacked one of my servers that just didn't get patched <laughs> one month, and they were mining crypto and oh. like, oh, like, you know, what's crazy <laughs> about that is like, the cool thing is they didn't like uh, obfuscate their scripts or anything. So their scripts had all their FTP username and password for their command and control center. So uh, we, we uh, my pal and I, Adrian, uh, Adrian Corona, I don't know if you all know him, but um, he works at a, he works at a competitor now. So, you know, we'll, we'll excuse him for that. He is my No friend. shout outs. Got uh, it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, he and I were uh, basically went up there and I think the, the biggest thing that hit me about that, was that I opened up that uh, that FTP site that was the, the command and control for the threat actor, and they must have had thousands of machines under their control. Basically, oh, you logged into it. Oh, oh, that's oh the yeah, no, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay. So I got into it because they, you know, all their all their stuff's in their script, right? So, right, so you, right. you you used it as a demo. You just brushed it off. <laughs> I meant to do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no, we uh, so we went up there, and and you know, the thing that dawned on me right then was. You know, these are all these machines that are completely under the threat actor's control, and none of these pre people probably have any idea what's happening. You know, it could be your parents, it could be my parents, it could be my grandparents, it could be any of these people, right? Our next door neighbors, and all they know is their machine's slow. So that kind of ticked me off. You know, I was like, hey, that's not cool. You know, so so we um, we we blanked out his stuff. We left. We did a Bing translate, and left a very nice note uh in his native language that we determined to say hey you need to get your own crypto mining hardware uh, but really from that day like i i kind of thought of myself as like the cybersecurity batman like i need to <laughs> i need to protect the you know the innocent you know so uh but anyway that that's I love that story if i think back over my career like that's the one inflection point where i was like wow people in cybersecurity not just helping enterprises but also helping people at home um kids uh right. small businesses etc you know, we're, we're definitely needed. And, um, and, uh, the, the work that we do is, uh, is important. So anyway, that's what Thank comes you. to mind. Thank Not really you. anything to do with my last job, but it, uh, yeah, that's a great story. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent story. And I don't think it's really a hack back if you had the username and password, right? You're just more, I, I, I didn't feel that way. You know, right. I, uh, I, I figured yeah. now, what's funny is, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm exposing my, my naive, naivety, or I don't know what that word is, naiveness, whatever, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. a bit. And I did notice my home internet 
uh, from that point on was like the, the little router that I got from my ISP was like crashing every day. <laughs> you were targeted. Yeah. In the middle of the night I woke up, you know how you, for some reason, like I wake up in the middle of the night and I think of these things, like, it's like, whatever I, I woke up, I was like, dude, I, I logged into that dude's FTP server from my home machine. Yeah. From my, yeah. Home, oh, my, my work machine at home. Yeah. So he had my source IP. And yeah. so like straight up that dude, I, I, I mean, that's my conspiracy theory, but I think straight up, <laughs> That dude was like just railing on my home internet, wanting to get revenge. Maybe but, I think uh, so. Did you get a new yeah. dynamic IP from the ISP the next day? Just call yeah. him up. Like, you, hey, can you, you know, cycle that for me? Yeah. No, I didn't. I um, I, I actually it. did a a pass through to uh, an OpenSense device that I built uh, to handle that because it's giga. It was gigabit, right? Internet to the house. Nice. So I just couldn't that that little ISP broadband one uh, couldn't handle that kind of traffic. So, but OpenSense kind of. Well, it could it. also be that at that point, Bing Translate was not the best. You may have just welcomed <laughs> welcomed him into your home like Dracula. Right. Yeah. Please, please been. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Been. yeah. Please. Yeah. Come on down. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. my router is ready for you. <laughs> my <laughs> router <laughs> is ready for you. <laughs> yeah. Pick up line. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. I, yeah. It hasn't worked so far, but yeah. Yeah. So I like the Batman reference. Um, Andrea kind of. I don't know. I think she. She called you out today when we were discussing. You're also potentially a Star Trek fan. Uh, you know, I'm. I know of Star Trek. I've watched Star Trek. I, oh. I am a. I'm a Star Wars fan. I but Star I. Star Wars I'm not, fan. Okay. I'm not mutually exclusive. I don't judge. Like okay. it's all good. Yeah. Let's when I met Jake, he had a Boba Fett backpack. Yes. You still have yeah. the Boba Fett backpack? That's I cool. do. It's yeah. It was sweet. Back- <laughs> yeah, it's back here in the closet. Yeah, I'm also a Back to the Future fan. So yes. I'm my bitch. that's what oh, I was going to ask you. Tell everyone how you came to own a DeLorean, Jake. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm full of like useless DeLorean information. But um, but yeah, I you know I'm I'm 45, so I grew up with Back to the Future as a kid, and um, always wanted a DeLorean. I thought those going doors were just so awesome and the Super stainless cool. steel, just so cool, right? Yeah. And then I realized that that car is uh very special from an engineering perspective and a reliability <laughs> perspective it's very special it takes <laughs> takes a lot of care feet but uh but anyway i was able to buy one about 10 years ago um pretty cheap like you know the guy's dad passed away willed it to him and it sat in a garage for like six hours so yeah I, I, I bought it shipped it to my house worked on it for about six months and got it running and then now 10 years later i ripped it all apart again uh, so uh, i'm actually restoring it right now but yeah huge back oh, wow. to the future fan yeah does it have a uh, compartment on the dash where you can grab random trash from the alleyway and feed it for fuel to travel through time? You know, yeah, no Mr. Fusion. Yeah, I okay, don't have Mr. Okay. Fusion. I, I've tried to keep it pretty original, but actually the engine um, and everything is 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 not, it's so underpowered. Like a lot of people don't know that about DeLorean, but they call it the gentleman's sports car because it looks nice, but it it drives like crap and, it, and it's very slow. <laughs> Um, so I'm Show actually no putting, go. yeah, yeah. I'm putting a V8 in it now. Um, so that should oh, be nice. Cool. There we go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Should wow. Be. A DeLorean. That's crazy. That's so yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm, that's why I have high. a flux capacitor. Did you put one in? I didn't. No, no. It's on my list. Oh, uh, look at that. Noodle. Yeah. Noodle. We're you guys on the are same, same wavelength. wavelength. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But I will say for Jake having a, a busy family, he has more hobbies than I know of anyone and way more than I do who do not have a family, but he's always got something going on. Like I said, I'm a man child. Like I, <laughs> you know, these 3D printer stuff, you know, uh, Arduino projects, the DeLorean, um, you know, fast cars, you know, I, uh, I, I am a, a man child for sure. Yeah. Or slightly <laughs> slow cars, but cool looking cars. You exactly, yeah. Right, Stylish, yeah, right. but, yeah, yeah. yeah. You had yeah. what was the car you had that was so fast that you got rid of? Oh, I had a Hellcat. Yeah, I had a Dodge oh. Hellcat, and oh. yeah, that thing almost murdered me at least twice. Yeah, and I'm a Corvette <laughs> guy. Like I've had a Corvettes and stuff, but that car was just scary, and the insurance on it reflected how scary it was. So <laughs> I've yeah, seen some police chases that, in the states from helicopters with a Hellcat out out uh, there, performing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. In my in my stomping ground, Texas, there may or may not have been some dude that went like 160 miles an hour on 35, and uh, I think he eventually ran out of gas. That's how they eventually caught him. It wasn't <laughs> yeah, he ran out of gas. So apparently, 
yeah, you can only go 160 miles for like 15 minutes full throttle, like until you run out of gas. So I, I never found that out, but yeah. <laughs> well, another know. thing you did in your spare time was write a book. So I did. Yeah. yeah. Let me, so if you just, for those listening in, if you go to Amazon and search for Jake's name, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name because I get it wrong every yeah. time. My lips get all tumbled. Um, it, it, if you try to search for his name, it actually pulls up lawnmower. So even Amazon doesn't uh, <laughs> know how to pronounce it, but you did write a book, a very important book. I think it goes, kind of goes along with what your role is at Microsoft, but, um, you did co-write this with two of my buddies. One is one of my teammates, Sarah, uh -huh. she's on my team here at Microsoft, um, Sarah Young, and then Yuri. Yeah, so I, I have some questions, but I, I'd like to hear more about <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, um, yeah, Yuri approached me, and I was, I was super flattered. Like I, I've always wanted to write a book. Um, it's just, it's on the list, you know. We all have these bucket list things, and so yeah. one of them was, hey, I, I'd like to write a book about stuff. Um, uh, yeah, actually, uh, sorry to derail. Hacking Dave, yeah, <laughs> Dave Kennedy does have a DeLorean. He he converted it to a. Uh, a time machine. So yes, Dave Kennedy and I have wrapped on Twitter. Uh, I showed him my sequential head uh, taillights. And so, yeah, he's, uh, I follow <laughs> him. He follows me, but he has a much bigger fan base and a lot smarter than I am. But, uh, but yeah, he does have a DeLorean. Um, but yeah, yeah. Yuri asked me, he said, Hey, would you like to write, um, you know, exam prep book for SC 200, um, the security admin, um, exam. Uh, you know, you know, Defender for Endpoint really well. You know, M365 Defender pretty well. So, and the products in it well enough to write a book, at least and, and pass somebody on the exam, although that's <laughs> arguable. Um, but, um, you know, yeah. So he asked me to participate and, um, you know, it was a, uh, it was a great experience. I, I'm going to preface it by saying it was a great experience. And I can now say, um, you know, I, I've written a book like I've done. Okay. Uh, now, will I ever write a book again? I, I, I don't know. Um, and I don't know if it's because, you know, Yuri uh, really, I, I will say Yuri really pushed me. Um, he did push me to, um, to try harder. <laughs> it's probably the, the best way to say it, but I'd never written a book before. And, um, you know, I greatly underestimated, I'll say this, I greatly underestimated the effort that it takes to write one of those books. You know, I kind of took it for granted and thought, oh, I can do this. You know, I can write this. I've been training people, you know, et cetera. But I'll tell you, that was a learning experience for me. That that book writing kicked my butt. Like I, yeah. um, I had a lot of fun doing it at times, but there were times where like, you, you can ask my wife, like I, she didn't see me for a week. It's work. At one point. It's oh, actual it's, work. Yeah. It is. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you know, and I see people giving a call out to Yuri as a guest. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's such a, um, he's such a great, a great person. And really like when I look at that, that guy and I see what he does in his life from a fitness, from a martial arts, to his family, to his books, to that dude oh, yeah. just like lives his life, like pegged, the needle is pegged on the tachometer. Like that dude is the man. And so, um, so anyway, I, I really appreciated that chance that he, he gave me with that book. And, um, and I did learn a lot and I had fun writing like the, my, probably my favorite part was writing that last scenario because I, I came up with the attack scenario, ran the attack scenario, and then, um, documented how to investigate it. And that was, that was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun doing that. Um, so, but, so Yuri's uh, a good, good buddy of mine. I've known him for years and years. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Get absolutely. And just watching how he has progressed even from when he started at Microsoft, his fitness and stuff. Yeah. I get a yeah. sense. And you tell me if maybe you saw this, um, Yuri and Oren Thomas used to write books together. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they kind of write them separate. It's almost like they're in a competition. Who's going to write the most books. Who's going to put their <laughs> name on the most books. Yeah. And, and Yuri keeps fishing to get people like Jake and everybody come in and write a book with him <laughs> just so he can beat Oren in the contest. Yeah. Yeah. He's competitive. Like he's, yeah, it's on when it comes to Yuri. Yeah. He, he, he competes, but, uh, but you know, he held Sarah and I to a, to a standard, you know, his name was going to be on that book and he, our names are going to be on that book. And he wanted to make sure that that book was like the best thing we put out. And, and while I, 
you know, there was definitely some uh, reflection time that I had to myself when it came <laughs> to like, hey, Jake, will you rewrite this part again? Um, you know, I, I thank him for that. And I thank him for the opportunity. He, um, he definitely was a great mentor in that whole experience. Uh, and, and what he told me was true. And I didn't have any expectations, but he said, hey, you don't write the book for the money. Uh, you do it, you know, to spread your your, your privilege, really, the, the privilege that we have from working for a great company and having the the things that we have and sharing that with other people and spreading knowledge and then also learning what they come back with too. And um, it was a great, it was a great experience all up. Yeah. Will I do it again? I, I don't know. It, I think it shaved a couple of years. Ago. I got so gray in my beard now. I don't know if you can <laughs> see it, but I think that's from the book, but, but it was a great experience. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What was the most, I, I, I know a lot of our listeners sometimes consider doing that, right? So what was the most difficult part? Was it just trying to find the ideas or was it trying to complete you know, an idea or something like that? You know, I think it was the, it was the meticulousness of the book writing process, you know, like your screenshots had to be, you know, saved in separate files and named a certain way and they had to be clean. So that was like one big thing I failed at. Like I was trying to be all cutesy and cool by like, you know, highlighting stuff and putting arrows and like, you know, little ninjas with like nunchucks and stuff all over the, <laughs> the graphics. And it turned out that that was bad. Like you're supposed to give them, the clean graphics and then they do the highlighting. So I had to go back and take all my screenshots again because I didn't yes. save the original. Oh. Ones. So, and you know, with, with our products, with security products, stuff's changing, right? So like the alert that you generated just to get that screenshot is now like it, you know, older than seven days. So your filter's different. I mean, it, it was, it was a beating, like it was, <laughs> <laughs> ah, you know, like I'm having flashbacks here, but yeah, so it, um, you know, that, that was the, I think that was it. It was the meticulousness of actually the, the gymnastics and the things that you had to do to, to, to get the, the content in the way that the publisher wanted. And then right when you're worn out from that, the edits come back. And, oh, yeah. you know, then there's a million of those and it's like, you know, you're not making any sense here. And it's hard to, when you, when you spend time away from your family, when they're all like, you know, it, whatever and you're you're writing the book um you know when they come back with that it's pretty hard to not i, I take my work very personally so, and andrew can attest to that um you know so it was very hard for me not to get kind of upset like fair mean that doesn't make sense i don't get That's it fair you know so yeah. you know yeah so yeah yeah when when it's when you're writing on technology solutions you know sc200 so it, you have to almost pick like a moment in time and i'm sure you've got like a a, a specific runway because to your point is there a rename coming is there a portal <laughs> consolidation coming yep. you know you've got to nail it in that window right it's i always thought that was yep. an interesting part about writing on security are technology. books um worthwhile with the number of updates and features that are coming out i guess right yeah you know that's I, I pondered the same, you know, I pondered the same thing. Uh, I think the good thing about books is it really, it can take you from A to Z, you know, mm -hmm. when you're trying to study things online and learn and stuff like that, those are great articles, but like, I, and maybe it's just me and, and I just don't know how to use le our learn site, but like you bounce everywhere, like to learn yeah. something A to B, it's really hard to do that. And I see our content writers, it's not their fault. Like I do see them putting together more, you know, use case type things and, you know, A to Z type things. And that's cool. But I think that's where books kind of still win a bit is that they can take you from a subject from kind of A to Z. And then, yeah, absolutely. You need to go and make sure that all that stuff is still true because yeah, yeah by the time the book publishes, it's like three months later, six months later, and a lot of stuff changes. Well, and you can go, you can read that book anywhere, right? It's a, yeah. you know, toilet periodical. You can, you know, yeah. work a little yeah, absolutely. You know, and you can, yeah. you know, I'm still a big, I love a good physical book. You can highlight it. You can circle it. You can turn the page down so you can come back to that same thing later. I'm sure you can maybe do that stuff, um, you know, on a Kindle or something, but. Uh, I don't even have a book around me. I thought I no. might, but I don't. don't have I have oh. my stack of books to be read out there is about 20 deep, so. Yeah, Countering like, cyber yeah. sabotage. Whoa, oh, that's I got, cool. it at, I got it at B sides. It's right after how to play your best golf. So I have ah. yeah, then I do ebooks as well. So, but anyway, as we're talking about books, you're right, Andrew. There's it's a nice feeling. Although I will say, when I was studying for my CISSP and I saw how thick the actual paper copy book was, I'm like, I'm going to opt for ebook here so that I don't get wrist sprains trying to keep that thing open all the time. <laughs> it's like an encyclopedia. 
Uh, <laughs> anyway, circling yeah. back, Jake, great job, great job. That's that's oh, really thanks. impressive. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. And um, there's some questions in the chat. I see, like, hey, how do we get to talk to Jake about partner security? <laughs> so, um, so I uh, I do like a lot. I think it's like um, there's a there's a partner like question and answer uh, thing that I drop in from time to time. You know, my my day job is to to uh, spec features and um, you know add features and trend the security posture of partners all up across. So uh, I try to talk to as many partners as I can, but unfortunately, you know, I just keep my work pile keeps getting higher. But um, but uh, if you drop in on the q and I've done a few of those recently. Um, so I, I'm on there. And then I also, I do troll the uh, MSP slash MSP Reddit uh, from time to time. No, no, troll's not right. What is it? Um, lurk. 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 Yeah, lurk. I lurk. I don't troll. That that that's the bad one. No, I yeah, learned except that FTP um, server. You trolled them pretty hard. You, but, right. Yeah, that was a troll. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was it. Yeah. Well played, Brody. Yeah. yeah. So um I, I do um I do look in there because honestly, like, you know, you hear the the stories about Bill Gates like writing in commercial in the early days of Microsoft, he'd write in commercial or um what do you call that? Commercial class on airplanes. And just so he could get feed real feedback from real people that have no idea who he is about his products. I kind of internalize that, and so I, I read Reddit and um, that MSP uh, subreddit quite a bit just to kind of see, you know, have my finger on the pulse on what partners are struggling with, you know, what's their feedback about stuff we just came out with, stuff like that. So, um, you know, try try to catch me on there. Um, I, oh, I don't think I've got is. my uh, yeah. yeah, but uh, but yeah, slash well, MSP is pretty interesting. Yeah, I've never been to that one. I, I will uh, stick it in the show links plus. And Jake, we'd love to talk you into at the very least lurking on our Discord server. We've got a cool little community. No, you're not, oh, cool. we're not holding you to any SLAs or anything, Jake, or you need to you need to be a heavy participant. But there it's a, it's a nice eclectic community of, of like minded security professionals. So if you want to just throw it out there if you want to hop on. Yeah, yeah. No, I'd I'd love to join. Actually, it this is kind of embarrassing, but um like my my 13 year old son is like jamming with all his friends on Discord. You know, they do like Roblox builds and stuff like that he's like dad you know i need you to join up on my discord channel and i'm like i don't even have a discord account son like so like i i've, I've been looking for an excuse to get into discord and i, I can't develop roblox stuff so I, i'd be happy to join yeah i look forward to we it. could put a awesome. msp channel on there right Brody? Awesome. yeah dude I, yeah yeah absolutely on it right now on it right now yeah. Yeah. I, I bet noodle will have it created before we're even done here but he'll have the first I, question posted it's all over it it's all over it I'm on a pop culture discord for the podcast X-Ray Vision. If any of you nerds out there watch oh, X-Ray yeah. Vision, which is yeah. Marvel and stuff. But they did like a little survey of, um, you know, ages and things like that. And I think I was by far the oldest person on the <laughs> discord <laughs> channel. Was it was it um, your use of English that gave that away? Yeah. No, I mean, they actually or... did a survey. They like literally did a survey and then oh, showed man. the follow up later. And I was like, oh, look, 16 those. to 25 seems to be the sweet spot for that. <laughs> you don't have to answer those truthfully. I, I'll, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> but Jake, Edward isn't here, but Edward always asks the question. Oh, that's nice. Um, of you. What is your favorite Defender product and why is it MCAS? Is his question. Why is it MCAS? <laughs> are, we, but, are we allowed to still call it MCAS? I think it's Well, Defender. I still call it MCAS because no one can okay. else decide what to call it. Um, is it NBA? Is it MDCA? Is it whatever? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, yeah. share with us what's your favorite Defender product. You know, it's, oh, it's tough because I think, you know, um, Defender for Identity you know, the, its predecessor, Advanced Threat Analytics, is really what I think catapulted me into cybersecurity. You know, the first time that I did like pass a hash um, and it detected it, like I was like, wow, like that is just, that's so awesome. And I think that's actually what drew me in. But, but honestly, like the memories that I have of, you know, meeting you and spending time in Israel and, the, and you know, in a very special place with special people over there, you know, I got to say Defender for Endpoint. Um, definitely is still my, still my number one. It's, it's number one in my heart. I, I spent a long time with that product and, uh, yeah, I, you know, I still run it for my home machines. So, uh, yeah. So it, I think defender for endpoint wins, I'd say ATA is probably a close second. Yeah. I will, I will agree with that. You went on mute Brody. Thank you. 
gums flapping, nothing coming out. That's everybody's dream when it comes to me. Uh, the the follow up Edward sometimes likes to ask is what what would you recommend a customer deploy first in the Defender stack, right? So you're advising, right? Let's say, hey, I'm new. I'm a dentist. I run X-ray in the cloud. What should be the first thing I deploy to keep my organization safe? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a fantastic question. I think that uh, get your Azure Active Directory in order. Like so, you know, Azure Active Directory. Do as much as you can with the with the base SKU. You know, um, the P1 is definitely worth it. P2 is awesome if you do it. But yeah, get your get your identity. Um, you know, the the payoff versus effort when it comes to identity theft. You know, especially in in cloud identity, it, you got to take care of that first. And it, just in my opinion, you gotta you gotta take care of your identity first. So yeah, I would say um, out of the Defender products, I would say that uh, after. Um, you know, uh, uh, Azure AD uh, premium, I would probably look at uh, Defender for identity, you know, just to just to watch over those things. And I would say also, yeah, Defender for cloud apps is a close second because, you know, right. malicious OAuth apps, that's the other hotness, right? So is, yeah, those two, those two, I would say in that order, I would say. Huge trend. You know what we're not hearing a lot of lately is old Defender for Office. You know, it used to be like such a focal point and I mean, uh, it's still important, but you know, we ask this question regularly, Jake, and it never comes up lately anymore. Shout out to the Defender for Office 365 team. You're still awesome. Um, but yeah, it was good to get your insight on that. I, I agree that identity is important. Well, and, Office is secure by default, right? Well, I mean, well, yeah, I, I feel <laughs> like, you know, one of the toughest jobs I think is the, the Defender for Office team, right? Is because think if we think about it, like, they have literally a sandbox that a threat actor can use all day long to bypass everything they put in, right? So like, is this gonna work? Let's try it. Oh, it didn't work. Okay, let me try it this way. So I mean, like they are against a, and, and the amount, of, I, I, I talked to a couple colleagues in Defender for Office, especially in like anti-spam, uh, anti-phishing, and the amount of, of email that they deal with is unfathomable. Like the number of escalations of, of like report it, you know, type, things through the plugin and all those things yeah. i was astonished by the amount of volume they they face so um yeah i hats off to them i think they're they're one of the they're one of the i would say um under uh, appreciated teams because like yeah. nobody nobody says hey great job blocking that fish it's always you know that about the one that got through so yeah hats 100%. off to them for sure yeah yeah, good point. Good point. Andrew, you want to close us out with anything? Your guest? No, I mean, Jake, thank you so much for coming on. You're always entertaining and it's always good to see your face. I actually got to have lunch with Jake a couple of weeks ago when I was in Dallas. So that was a treat for sure, since I never get to see anybody face to face anymore, including you guys. Um, Noted. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm afraid, me. Jake, no. you have a stalker now. I think Noodle is going to be your <laughs> new stalker here. So yeah, which is yeah, cool. and it looks like that MSP channel is up already. Let's see. All right. Is it? Cool. Yeah. Well, I was getting in trouble for channel bloat, so I stopped making channels. But we'll, oh. we'll, let, let's get Jake <laughs> on Discord first, and then if we need another channel, we'll do it. Well, yeah, they, they ease me into it. Part. Like I'm an old man, so I like the controller, you know, TV controller with the big <laughs> buttons. You know, like I'm an old man now. You know, so got yeah. it, got but, it. It's but a thanks pretty for having me. Yeah, it's... well, there is the yeah. defender for gardening. If if there's anything worth <laughs> joining Discord for, it's that because Brody, right. as we know, is the Martha Stewart of security. I. <laughs> <laughs> I've been called worse. Thanks, Rod. That was, that's good. That nailed it. <laughs> Jake, thanks for coming on. It's wonderful getting to know you. I'm going to add you on LinkedIn ASAP if we're not already friends. And yeah, let's get you on Discord. Uh, love to keep the conversation going. The work you're doing is extremely important. And in all seriousness, I can tell that you've got passion for wanting to help the dentists out there, the schools, the ma and pa's out there, SMBs. It's an extremely important role that you're that you're fulfilling. And we really appreciate as a security community all the hard work that you put into this. So thank you very much for everything you do. And yeah, you no make it look cool. Like you make it look cool. Too. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks for having me on. And like the other thing is to shout out to the team I work on, the Partner Center Security team. It's not a well-known team, but they, you know, the folks I work with, you know, they they've been working on GDAP, um, the you know all those projects. So, uh, which is a huge challenge. So, um, I'm very honored to have, be on the show. I'll come back anytime you want. And um, thanks for the, doing the show. I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, I'm a big fan. Anybody on your team that 
if they feel like they want to come on. Andrea is our casting director, so cool. Uh, good for her. Yeah. I don't allow cool. boring guests, Jake. So okay, yeah. got not it. being boring. Yeah, got it. <laughs> I laughed I, I several to, times. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Self-deprecating humor is the way. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally right. And I have plenty to go. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well. Um, Another great episode of our podcast slash show team. So thank you all very much for listening, for watching. Again, we've got an amazing lineup for Women in Cybersecurity Month coming up here in March. Yes. We'd love it if you tune in live. Might even be able to get some questions through to our guests if you if you drop in and ask. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you, Jake, for joining us today. Thanks, Andrea, for yet another not boring guest. And <laughs> I hope everybody has a wonderful day. And stay awesome. secure out there. Uh, there will be... Uh, additional notification about Women in Cybersecurity Month on our Substack channel tomorrow. So look for that. Thanks, right. Rod. We appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Have a great night. Good night. Take care. Jake, stay on. Okay.